was just making some tea and Ernie's just about to jump on here and knock my camera over. But, so I'm gonna do this quick. We're gonna go talk about non-orthogonal linear contrasts. It's gonna be fun. All right, this is the last video for this lab. We are on planned non-orthogonal comparisons for the one factor in a the main purpose of this is going to be really fast. I've set it as a practical section. We're not going to go into a lot of detail. I'm going to show you how to work through the textbook examples using R because there's definitely some wrinkles here. Here is the first textbook example. We're going to use the Romeo and Juliet data, and that's the Bransford experiment with the cartoon and the funny paragraph. So I'm going to haul in the data that we had um, if you scroll down, you can find the pretend data for each of these four groups. So I just took that and popped it into R, and I made a tibble, and there it is. So we've got our tibble, and it's got all of those different means in it. The order of these labels is important, so I've entered them in in terms of exactly this order that you see here in the textbook. And remember, we want to make sure the factor levels have that same order. That's going to be important later. So I'm defining those levels right here. So now when we look at Romeo and Juliet, it'll have those levels may group a factor with four levels, and they're in this specific order. All right, now it comes to the non-orthogonal linear contrasts. And in the textbook example, there are four different research hypotheses that are laid out here and these are converted into contrasts. So for example, the presence of any context has an effect. Well, that would be a comparison between the group that had no context and the other three groups that had some context. Uh, the context given after the story has an effect. So that would potentially be the context after compared to some control, no context. And we have two more contrasts set up here that evaluate the patterns implied by these research hypotheses. So I took these four different contrasts and I entered them into R, one, two, three, four, just like that. And if I put them into a contrast matrix, I could do a correlation real quick and I could see that all of my contrasts are not totally uncorrelated. So if they were, we'd have zeros in the upper and lower triangle. We can see some of them are correlated with each other. Hence, they are non-orthogonal. I apologize for using the word hence. Let's assign these contrasts to the contrasts for the independent variable group. And let's scroll down a little bit in this textbook example. What we see here is the computation of F values for each of the four contrasts. So my goal is to show you how you could use R to compute these F values. It's a little bit different from what we were doing before. Yes, you can have a contrast matrix here, and you could put it in to the independent variable contrast property. And then you could do what we did before, run the ANOVA, and print out the ANOVA table with the four contrasts. So this sort of works, but it, it's broken. R wants your contrasts to be orthogonal, and when they're not, it just sort of adds them in, assuming they are, and then kind of breaks. So for example, um, we have four of our contrasts. We're missing an F value for the fourth one. If we compare these values to the one we see in the textbook, uh, I'd I don't really see, oh, here we go, 5.17. That's the F value for the first contrast. That's right here, 5.17. So that worked, but the next F value is 0 0.04, not 8.17. And the next F value is 19 and not 8.34. So who's right, the textbook or R? Well, it's not R in this opening in R here, but it appears something like these contrasts are added stepwise, so they keep soaking up the, the available sums of squares, and once they've explained it all, there's nothing left to explain, so that might be one reason why we don't see 
any information on the fourth contrast. Anyways, we can solve this problem. And let me just say, in this example that we're looking at, uh, the, the, this is called a traditional method, I, I think. Or, and the idea here is we just pretend that the non-orthogonal contrasts are orthogonal, and we compute the f values as normally would for each of them. Unfortunately, when we try to do it in R the way we normally would, we don't get the correct f values out. So it's still possible to do it in R. My goal is to get an f value for each of the contrasts. What we can do is instead of putting all four of the contrasts into a matrix and then putting all four of them into the contrast property for the group variable, we can just do it one at a time. So C1 is the first contrast, and I'm putting it into the contrast property for the independent variable group. And I'm doing the ANOVA, I'm asking it to print out the contrast, and there it is. And this is the correct F value. We could do this again. I put the second contrast in there, and now you can see we're getting 0.04 for that f value. This is the correct f value here. And we got a 19.92 and an 8.34. So those are the same as the ones that you would get in your textbook. So this is a bit of a warning when you're putting in non-orthogonal contrasts into the ANOVA function in R, make sure you do it one at a time if that's what you want to do. All right, the last thing is the last example in the textbook, the return of multiple regression, as it says. I love that Star, Ref Star Wars reference. Well, I've been talking a lot all day and I, I'm still working on it. So we have a multiple linear regression approach to dealing with non-orthogonal contrasts. And let's do that one. Again, we will use the Romeo and Juliet data. There's a wrinkle here. So when you get down to chapter 13.33, and if you're trying to do this in R, do pay close attention because uh, the linear contrasts that we use here for this last example are different from the ones we just used. So you're gonna to wanna to go into R, define the data frame as before, make sure our factor levels are ordered correctly, and define the new contrasts. So these are different we can see that um, there's three of them. If we want to check that they're non-orthogonal, we could do that real quick, but I'll let you do that. So these ones aren't orthogonal. Okay, so what does the textbook do first? It does two things in this example. The first thing that it does is it says, let's just do the quote traditional approach of treating each of these linear contrasts as if they were orthogonal and let's get those individual F values. So if you stepped through this example, you would see that there's a textbook approach here of computing the F values using these formulas. Okay, well, we should be able to do what we just learned or saw using R to do this. So let's try it out. First thing is we will assign contrast one to our independent variable for group. And then we will run this summary and we will get the F value 19.92. It's the same as this one here. I'm gonna do this again for the second contrast. We got 13.29, so that is the same. And finally, the third one, we get uh, 4.79. So great, we were able to re reproduce these three F values using that traditional approach. The last thing is the multiple regression approach. Whoops, I think I just skipped past it. Here is the multiple regression approach where we compute again three F values, one for each contrast, but now we're getting pretty different F values. 3.59 is way smaller than 19 and same with 1.5 and 0 0.04. So let's see if we can do the multiple regression approach. And with this approach, what we do is we add the contrasts as factors into a multiple linear regression. 
So if we were to look at the, the data here, we've got our different groups, we've got 20 different subjects, we've got our comprehension scores. And what does it mean to add the contrasts to the multiple linear regression? Well, um, let's do it. What I'm gonna do is add three new columns, one for each contrast. And the way I have it, so this first contrast is three and then three negative ones. If I think I got that right from the textbook, I just wanna double check. So yeah, three and then three negative ones. Great. Now that three refers to a contrast for the first group, a value for the first group. Then we've got three negative ones, which are the values for the other groups. If we look at this data, we're talking about the first group. Well, that's context before. So there should be a column here with a bunch of threes for that one, and then every other group gets a negative one. So that's the kind of column I'm trying to create. I need five threes and five each of the negative ones. I'm going to basically repeat this for all of those different columns uh, representing each contrast. So now uh, we've added the contrasts as predictor variables in a multiple linear regression. The idea is how well can we explain the comprehension variable in terms of the multiple linear regression of these three contrasts. So if we just add them into a multiple linear regression just like this, the same answers as the textbook. Pretty close. I mean, we have to do one little thing. See, the textbook is finding the, oh, sorry, go down, down here. The textbook is finding the F values, and here we're getting the T values uh, for each of these contrasts. And if you wanted to, for example, take the T value and square it, because remember we learned the relationship between T and F. If we square that value, we're going to get the F value from the textbook, and the same would be true for each of these other T values. Okay, part of the way that this was calculated in the textbook was relying on calculations of semi-partial correlations. And just to show you we could get those same values, we could load up the library PP core and put in our data frame now with our comprehension variable and those other columns for the three contrasts. And if we run this line here, took out the estimate, which will be the partial correlations, and if we square them, we're going to find the same values that we put that we saw in the textbook. So there's the 0.954 right here, and the 0.04 here, and so on. Okay, that is non-orthogonal linear contrast for you, just a quick supplement showing some of the ins and outs of doing these things in R. I hope that was useful, and we'll see you on Thursday.